Central Florida. A Mac spectacular on ESPN2. That's Alan Gooch, the interim coach for Central Florida. Mac Prater, punting for Central Florida. He punted so deep, he may have outkicked his coverage. We used to spot chat because Chris Royal, he's got plenty of space to do some things, to maneuver, to ramble. I mean, I tell you, Royal could have gone to the house. But he went 70 yards. If it wasn't for the punter, Matt Prater tackling him, he saved the touchdown, but Butchie Wallace would score in the next play and anyway. Seven zip Marshall, uh, Jason Schroeder hitting hard, catching over the middle. Peter Sands just takes him out. It's a top 10 nominee. Marshall came in averaging 267 yards in the air, but they stuck to a running attack on this play. Graham Gochner chugging, shaking, baking for the score. You made it in the herd win easily here on ESPN, both playing for the Conference USA title. People forget there were two teams involved in this game. It wasn't all about TCU. Bottom of your screen, you saw the space between the receiver and the defender. After the pass is thrown, the defender slipped. Well, look at the space now. Deron Lawrence, 50-yard touchdown, a career long for him. Southern Miss had a 7-3 lead. They're punting away now. Corey Rogers receives the punt. He's going to receive something else. The Sports Center still have that hit of the week. Oh. <laughs> they got one now. They, they got one now. Yes, we do, Coach Corso. Etrick Pruitt comes up with a big special teams play, and he's pretty good in the secondary, too. Comes up with the pick off Brandon Hassel. Pruitt had quite a ball game. Watch it, Pruitt, playing the safety, locking on the quarterback while the quarterback is locking on his receiver. Pruitt can recognize, and he's able to come across and make the clean interception. Southern Miss looking to score inside the five. Anthony Harris hit by the defender. That's okay. The second effort spin into the end zone. It's a 17-6 ball game. Later in the second, Dustin Almond. Nice pass in traffic through two defenders to Antoine Currington. It's 24-6. Things are getting out of hand. Only the second time in their last 23 games that TCU trailed at the half. Amon to Marvin Young. Touchdown. What is going on? It's 31-6. Now, wait a second. The game wasn't over. In the fourth, second and goal from the two, Kenny Hayter gets him a little closer. Here come the Horn Frogs. The onside kick. Eric Buchanan recovers for TCU. What are they going to do with the ball? They're driving on first and goal. Give it to the hater. The touchdown. It's 31-18. The chart says go for two. You're in the fourth quarter. Why not? Hassel on the keeper. It's 31-20. TCU, another onside kick. This time they pooch it in the air. Quintilly Harmon recovers. TCU's got the football. What a wild comeback. Third and goal from the two. Hassel on the option. Breaks in for the touchdown. He went 18 of 31 for 260. 108 of those passing yards to this guy. Reggie Harrell. The completion. TCU within a field goal. They scored 22 points in four and a half minutes. Four minutes left. Southern Miss trying to avoid the total collapse. Amon for Kenneth Johnson down to the 10. Led to a field goal in a six-point game. Hassel under pressure. Coughs it up. One of four turnovers by TCU. Oklahoma's the only unbeaten left in Division 1A. Southern Miss clinches at least a share of their conference title. Back to Mike Tirico. A uh, joyous celebration, understandably so, for a school that won conference titles in 96, 97, 99 in this league. And all the talk, understandably nationally, was TCU coming in. And when we sat down with the Southern Miss players, it all of a sudden got us refocused because they said, hey, we're here to win a conference championship. We don't care about the BCS, anything like that. And we see what happened here From tonight. From a coach's stamp, one of the greatest compliments you can have paid to you is that your players play hard and never give up. Gary Patterson lost his football game, but he won a hell of a lot of respect throughout the country the way his team played. Well, I think TCU they, was wonderful. TC is great. They showed a lot of heart. But let's not forget the team who won the game, and that is Southern Miss. They came out early, made a statement, found some confidence early in the game and they were able to hold on there down the stretch as TCU gave a great comeback. I believe Gary Patterson set with Jerry Punch. Let's go check in now. Aspirations, expectations of a conference title and BCS uh, title. Uh, how do you address the disappointment with the kids still with one game to play? Not, not any different than I did when, when we won. You know, we've got SMU next week. 
We're going to keep going, and uh, you know we got a chance to be 11 and one. TCU hasn't been 11 and one. Won 11 ball games very often. We got a chance to do it. Hey, coach, thanks for your time. Thank you, Jerry. The big picture now, without TCU in the BCS mix, what happens? We'll look at the standings, and you see behind Oklahoma and Ohio State, which moved up. Southern Cal, LSU, Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Michigan, so many with significant games left on the radar. I think the two at-large teams will be the winner and even the loser of the Ohio State-Michigan yeah, game yeah. and Texas. Those think, are the teams I think are going to go at-large. I think it just depends on who wins these, these final few games. Don't forget, Kansas State, by some chance, That's could right. beat Oklahoma. Then the whole thing is thrown out of whack <laughs> because Kansas State gets an automatic spot and Oklahoma's going to go. So yeah. you're right. I think if Ohio State beats Michigan, Michigan still goes to exactly. the Rose. I don't know about Texas. I think the Pac-10 is going to get a representative in the, in the Rose Bowl. I think the Rose Bowl is desperate after the last yep. few years to get a Pac-10 in a big But I got to say, sir, it won't be Washington State because they didn't sell enough tickets and they didn't do a good we'll job see. last year. It's got to be Texas because they got money with the alumni yep. and they got a great team. We'll see. The, the, we'll sh see. the shame of it for some folks in some regard was the Bowl Championship Series almost had the test case of if a team could get in from a non-BCS league and TCU almost gave us one of the great comebacks in college football with the pressure on the line to do that. But tonight's night instead was the story of Dustin Allman who lost his paternal grandfather just a week ago when he was here to see him watch him play in a game. Uh, he leads the comeback for Southern Miss from a team that lost to Nebraska by 24 on this field a month and a half ago to undefeated in the conference and the share of the championship. All right, guys, this was Southern Miss's third ever win against the top 10 team, and their first since Brett Favre and company beat Florida State in 1989. As for TCU, those guys discussed what the loss meant. Well, financially, it likely cost Conference USA $13.78 million. That's how much the conference would have taken in, likely, as a BCS participant. College football, number 20, Boise State, 15-game whack, winning streak on the line at Fresno State. Ryan Dinwiddie owns Fresno State, owns. First quarter hits Tim Gilligan. Doop! Gilligan gone, 73 yards. He caught six balls for a buck 49. It's 14-0, Boise State. And I know you're asking, well, how is Gilligan so wide open? Well, there he is right there, isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Beats everybody. Both safeties have their backs turned to the play. And it's an easy touchdown pass for Dinwiddie, who just lit up Fresno State again. 22 of 31, 273, threw for two, ran for one. Boise clinches at least a share of the WAC title.